and i gave my gmat in september 21st or 23rd i think 50 days to so all it took and even in that uh, in the beginning bridge course took me a lot of time to there were a lot of concepts to cover so seriously you would be shocked with my first mock test also 625 or something in gmat before i enrolled in this course in say first or second week of august during that time something told me okay i can get this done i can if i can stick to it properly but i have to do it like a do or die type mode so no, no other thing first of all big congratulations 715 on your gmat totally worth it 99 percentile score a 95th percentile on quant 84 percentile on verbal and a 98 percentile on data insights um surprisingly the the section that is very new data inside and you have scored it like big time so how do you find about this score how do you feel uh were there any uh, are you happy surprised or you think you could have done better what's your take on this i'm actually happily surprised but i feel that i could have done better at the same time because quant was my strongest point even prior to consulting with some weeks and all that uh so I could have done a bit better in quant, but I'm very happy with verbal and uh, data in text code. So that's why I asked uh, you could have done better because I'm seeing that, you know, quant is something uh, probably you could have pulled off. Where did you go wrong? How many questions did you go wrong in each of these sections? Do you recall? Quant, uh, one question. Uh, verbal, it was six questions and data in text, it was four questions. One question costed you five percentile. Was yes. what was the position of the question? Last question, the very last question. Twentieth question. Sorry, twenty twenty. Twenty-first. Twenty-first question. Yeah. Oh my. So, one of the things that tells us that the uh, number of questions, uh, if especially in quant, you can't make any mistake right there. So, um, again, a very brilliant score. Um, right here, and which means to say, you can really apply to any of the school, like the choice you have unlimited choices or rather the sky is the limit for you with this score, right? Uh, the score is good enough for any uh, for any admissions at any school. Now tell us about your journey as to how the GMAT thing happened. Uh, how did it come to your mind and what was your plan um, going forward? And then how did you prepare like in chronological order? So you mentioned quant has been the strength, right? So what were you struggling with in the very beginning? And uh, how did you progress with your preparation? So actually, MBA has been a dream of mine for the past five, six years. Really. I have tried in CAT also, but due to certain constraints, I couldn't get into colleges and satisfied with it. Uh, in this year, I wanted to take a career, okay. career break of one year and I wanted to see a circle. And uh, uh, when I was going through certain friends who wrote the GMAT recently, I've come to know that I've come to know about top 1%. Like, a cousin of mine, Sai Shina Shadi, he, he scored around 720 in GMAT, not focus edition, GMAT. And he said that it was pretty good. So I wanted a demonstration or demo of it. And when I consulted your organization, I felt very satisfied with my weakest point being verbal. And the way sir explained the of the principle and the way he made me understand where I'm going wrong. I mean, one hour was all it took to get where I'm making mistakes in the first session itself. Right. So that, uh, that gave me a boost up. And the word he said, okay, if you trust something, trust it to the end. And uh, I promise you a score you'll definitely be satisfied with but the thing is you have to be consistent okay. only consistency can do it. so i enrolled it in the end of july 31st of july actually right uh, and i gave my gmat uh, in september uh, 21st or 23rd i think 50 days was all it took and even in that uh, in the beginning bridge course took me a lot of time to there were a lot of concepts to cover so i had to i went through the whole course i completed the whole bridge course and i had to put more than 10 hours most of the days so i was able to get it done only thing i'm not satisfied with myself was if i could have gotten say 10 more days of more effort uh, i could have definitely cleared 100 percent with the support that uh, your institute has given Right, right. So tell me about yourself. You were able to put 10 hours a day. What were you, were you working? What, what were you professionally doing no, otherwise? I was working in, uh, till July and August, actually. Right. Uh, August was more of uh, my relieving time. Right. So uh, despite that, uh, I had to pull off some extra hours in the evening at all. September was complete 10 hour types, 10 hours a day. Right. August was more like 6 to 8 hours types a day. Right. So uh, in the initial beginning itself, you said you had to do some of the basics and then tab bridge course itself took a little longer time. Um, was there any point where you felt like, no, I'm not understanding or I'm not making any progress? Like what kept you going every single day? It's not easy to be doing one thing 
for 10 hours or at least six, seven hours every single day for 50 days, let's say. So what kept you moving and what kept you uh, progressing? Actually, uh, first of all, data insights was the section I felt, okay, I'm stuck. I'm done for so I won't be able to clear it and all that during the bridge course. I mean, I went in the sequence that first we'll be completing verbal and point and then data insights will be coming into the picture. Though data sufficiency was added uh, into data insights section, mm -hmm. but uh, data sufficiency and all the I mean, multiple data uh, reason, uh, yeah. these two were multi source like, multi source, MSR. Multi -source yes, yeah. I was completely stuck in that zone. I felt like I wasn't able to get even 50% right and all that. But uh, want successively, even in the mocks uh, you have provided and in the exercises, I was consistently able to score 95% plus. Yeah. And uh, even verbal also, my scores improved from somewhere around 40% to 75, 80% consistently. So that uh, that kept me motivated. Okay, if I can do this, right? I can also, maybe I'm going somewhere wrong in data in that section. So I'll go with the flow and I'll see where uh, I can reach a sufficiently satisfactory level. If I'm not reaching it, then I'll get back to the institute once. It was a self-paced course, so yeah. I didn't have much of doubts or any point where I was stuck, but more like didn't get satisfactory enough score in the beginning. Otherwise, I was supposed to give this GMAT in the beginning of September. Right. By 20 months. Because you were now very confident with data insight. Now tell me, uh, especially in verbal, how did you go with your practice or even studying, making your concept, what material and what content really stood out for you? Uh, any particular material that you practiced and suddenly changed the way you were approaching a given question. Um, and then you really approach it completely different, which led to higher accuracy. So I want to say only one line that you got in this. Stick to the material given to you. That's it. Nothing else. Nothing. I practice nothing else. Uh, only thing out of the top consulting material I've done was two mock tests from GMAT website. That's it. Right. Nothing else. Literally no other material. It's hard to believe, I'll tell you, Nandev, you have been, like right now, I can say the ideal student. I was just speaking to one other student who took a really long time uh, to get done with GMAT and she, she was like in a disbelief that it cannot happen that someone can get their GMAT score in three months time. You've taken much lesser time, by the way, right? Um, so here's me asking the question again, the recipe for a success, because, it re because someone says that, no, three months is just not enough and here you are with this score in less than 50 days. And you did, and you still feel like you could have done much shorter, but DI took a little longer. So um, the recipe here is that you spent six hours a single day. Like, how much time did it take for you to complete the complete the videos per se, along with the questions, and then start your practice? So actually, uh, from when I, when I got onboarded into this program, uh, so there were three phases as per uh, your top consulting. First is base course, and then is the live course, and then is the practice phase. Actually, as per what was said, I mean, revision if needed after this live course. So 50 hours, 120 hours, 30 hours, and rest is uh, practice time. For base course, nearly I spent more than 100 hours actually, just base course. And then I went through again, okay, I'm stuck here. Okay, let's go back. No point doing just that question. I won't be getting it. I'll be starting from scratch. Particularly in uh, critical reasoning, that too in conditional reasoning. In critical reasoning, numerical concepts I was uh, confident of. But uh, even conditional reasoning took me less time, but uh, more of... Uh, Assumptions, inference-based questions, uh, these two had me going on the run, actually. Right. They were even the last exam, I was hardly uh, 50% correct in assumption questions. So these things actually, uh, if the base course put your, if you are straight with your concepts, your basic concepts, foundation is right, then I feel that live course was actually, I enjoyed it actually. When 10 hours working straight a day. And most importantly, uh, whenever, in the beginning, I used to sit in sessions of one hour, spanning one hour. So that was, I felt it was pretty useless. That was where I felt I wasted time. So at least two to three hours, that was the minimum session length I have to sit through if I right. want to get it right. At least the length of a GMAT test. Right, right. In the uh, test, uh, while doing the test, it was literally a breeze. I mean, those search questions are a lot harder in these pa passages. I mean, passages are lengthy as anything. I mean, each passage took me just four minutes nearly to read and get, get a basic gist of it. Whereas in GMAT, it hardly took two minutes. I had plenty of time to review also all that. Nanda, they have to tell you one thing that um, there's still an element of surprise or a secret which uh, tells us that, you know, when you say something like, uh, look, if I had a problem with a certain question, I'm not doing just one thing, I'm doing the entire thing. That just blows my mind because that's not how uh, the shiddat they say in Hindi, you know, it's it's not with that kind of shiddat people actually sit and study. These people 
generally give up ki oh, let me take a break let me go out let me come back again and then come back to doing this this is one thing is sandeep sir's course made it really enjoyable for you but your personal uh, you know you gave so much of time you really put that effort that is commendable i would say where did that come from where did sitting for that long hours going back and not worrying about you know i'm going through this entire thing again uh, you know not affecting yeah. that where did that come from um, if you can because this is something about you right something about yes. upper percent sandeep gupta you know people get to experience but some of the qualities that is really required to be able to get it get it within 50 days that's what i'm asking about actually it is i used to look pretty lazy <laughs> I don't get tempted that much generally it was not uh, except for during work and all like uh, i'm pretty casual guy and all i feel that uh, even when i gave my cat i didn't spend this much uh, dedicated time though i didn't subscribe any material or anything but this time i don't know something tipped me off in the beginning itself say uh, i used to do the 31st in say first or second week of august during that time something tipped me off okay i can get this done i can if i can stick to it properly but i have to do it like a do or die type mode so no, no other thing just somewhat uh, focus that's all it is do you recall what tipped you off because because it tipped you off to good i mean uh, being from lazy yes. to being so committed this is a quality i was also speaking of sticking for so long really speaks uh, immensely about a quality in a person you will be after an mba or during an mba yes. it's the kind of thing that you would require that attention span sitting and making sure that it's done every single day and uh, you know anybody who you know <laughs> anybody who is going to be taking an admit or whichever school you would you have to showcase this this quality of yours because it's it's very commendable but what tipped you off well like uh, firstly i mean as i said in the beginning basic course my scores were bad and i was getting very less accuracy when quant quant was okay but as to were barely 50% so seriously you would be shocked with my first mark test also 625 or something in gmat before i enrolled in this course and that to a few questions were lucky guesses yeah so in that moment uh, i felt that okay if i can't get this right if i can't get myself straight committed uh, towards this exercise i won't be able to do anything literally even if i get in sgt and mba in a very good college also i won't amount to nothing if i can't put in the right effort right now so that uh, that thought itself gave me desperation and chills you can say literally i was afraid so i had to take a call so i had time i spent it right so when did you finish your gmat preparation like all studying the bridge material and so Uh, concepts and rich material live courses among pre and post uh, class exercises right. and uh, marks i didn't give them all in the total uh, so i completed it two days before gmat actually as i said i have uh, completely stopped uh, the day before i didn't touch anything everything i was literally relaxing but uh, till that day uh, i was spending even hours also so i specific my gmat gmat slot was at 10 to 12:15 right so i was specifically sitting that hour in the morning and the evening so i wanted to tune myself to that time also for nearly a week right so how many marks did you give and what was the lowest first mark that you got and what was the lowest mark that you uh, got the, as i said uh, written gmat mark uh, and say in the beginning of august you can say just after taking this course i was a bit confident and yeah. then it grounded me properly it's 25 was the worst right after that uh, in the marks i've taken in top uh, i was getting i mean i didn't give marks in the last moment from top actually last one was from gmat i average was around 675 median was 685 Right. Most of the scores were six fifty five to seven one five. That was the range my scores were in. In GMAT mock, I got seven twenty five. Correct. And in sectional tests also, my accuracy was pretty good actually. I topped that uh, verbal was eighty five percent. I mean, nearly eighteen questions, eighteen nineteen questions was the best. Uh, data inference it was seventeen questions, and quant was hundred percent. But how was the top mock? To, to be honest, the analysis of the mock portal was it very difficult or were no, you enjoying it? Yeah. Was it challenging? They were challenging, but they made me prepare right for the exam, pace myself right because uh, in uh, in the top mocks, most of the a lot of passages, not most, a lot of passages were say uh, one page, one and a half page types. I mean, very long actually. Long sitting. They took four hours, or, uh, four minutes or something to complete reading, just reading it, much less comprehending it is different thing. Even during questions, I had to come back to certain points. But uh, that helps me pace myself a lot better in the exam. I had nearly three to four minutes per section, per section. to review whatever questions I had in doubt. And uh, Octave, that method, I don't know how he came up with uh, that. Hats off, something else differently. Completely uh, brilliant. Uh, on the exam day, uh, you said you also had time 
say three minutes per section. Were there any question that you had to go back interview, or was there some question that was that really surprised or jolted you during the exam? Uh, so not much actually. Uh, it it was more uh, comedic in nature what happened in my review section. So I went back and I, I reviewed nearly uh, four questions in uh, DI and uh, DI and Vandal. I didn't review anything in Quant. Uh, these four questions I had out. I marked two right and two wrong previously and did the exact opposite thing. Conversely. <laughs> I marked the right one that's wrong, wrong one that's right. That's it. Okay. After that, I mean, that uh, one, I mean, two questions, I was uh, a bit conflicted between two options, but rest two, I put, I changed pretty confidently. That is so wrong. the ones I was conflicted about, they were wrong, they were wrong actually. That's right. Okay. Previously. Okay. Okay. Brilliant. So, um, Agnanadev, really, whatever you did, definitely you've done it right. But if you really have to uh, package it and say that and want to advise somebody to do something, so you got some advice from your cousin, what would you advise anybody who's starting out uh, for their GMAT preparation? So, simply be consistent. First and foremost is consistent. You'll need some at least 200 to 50 hours of study preparation. That too with long settings only, short settings will never do. And most importantly, this uh, top course helped me a lot. It made me absolutely confident in the exam. But even if you don't use top, if you choose one thing, just trust it to the end. Trust your teacher to the end. Don't uh, give up in between or don't start doubting yourself. Right. Brilliant. Amazing. Uh, I am very stumped by the entire uh, practice and preparation in a happy way. Right. And, um, and essentially, I would definitely want uh, you to see the successful MBA and more important, your successful career out of your MBA, right okay. at the end of it. Uh, I definitely see that happening. Extremely dedicated guy you are and uh, so happy that this score happened. And I think uh, if Sadeep said he could not join you, obviously, but big, big wishes from him. And when he sees this, right, and he will be so supremely proud. I can tell you that, right? Uh, you've done what he's asked you and you've trusted him in what he said in his course, in his classes, uh, thank you so much for choosing Top 1%. Thank you so much for choosing Sandeep, sir, as your mentor. And I really hope all the very best the, you know, in the admit. We'll stay connected and good luck, buddy. So thank you, Anataja. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye.